This is News 8 Now, this morning. When communities um, create opportunities for artists to be seen and to be supported, that makes a stronger community. So that's what we're really all about trying to do here. Starting a business, especially as an artist, can be really, really hard, um, especially for young people who don't have access to capital like maybe adults do. And so we really want to showcase their skills and give them a chance to build those um, business skills alongside their art skills. Parenting is one of the most difficult things we can do. And if we can just pass less judgment and more grace to each other when we're parenting, um, the when parents are less stressed, it helps kids function and do better. Good morning. Thank you for watching News 8 Now. I'm Sophia Pullman. And I'm meteorologist Eric Dean. It is Monday, April 17th, and the snow is back. Yes, it is. <laughs> Just to think, the other day we were in the 90s. <laughs> I know. And now we're seeing I, I know. I enjoyed it for the three days we had it. I was outside. It's a sneak peek of summer. Uh, yeah. And now we're back and to And now we're back to square one. Yes, yes we are. And I'll tell you what, the good news is it is starting to push its way out of here. Mm -hmm. So there is some good news there. It'll be out in the uh, late morning hours or some early afternoon hours for the rest of us. But by the uh, dinner time, it's going to be out of here. We'll be left with cloudy skies. So let's go ahead and hit the weather pod and take a look here at the big story for today. That snow is going to continue to linger across the Cooley region. It will dissipate as we go into uh, the evening and overnight hours, but we still have advisors on the map. Here we go. With the exception of Wabashaw and Fillmore County, winter weather advisory is still in effect for Dunn, Pepin, Winnesheek, and Alamakee County. The area is shaded in pink. That is the winter storm warning. So let's go ahead and hit the maps full screen so you can kind of see what's going on there. Like I said, uh, over towards Wabashaw and Fillmore County, you're out of the advisory as of right now. Now that band of snow is pushing its way out of the Cooley region at this hour. You can see over towards uh, La Crosse County, over towards uh, portions of Trempolo County, uh, still seeing snow at this hour. But let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit and I'll give you a grand tour as to what's going on over towards portions of Russ County, Eau Claire County, Chippewa County. You can see that line just now starting to push its way, uh, or the clearing line, I should say, pushing its way into uh, you guys. You can see over towards La Crosse County, over towards portions of uh, Alamakee County, now starting to clear out as well. Outside, we're seeing temperatures in the 20s and 30s. La Crosse, the sensor is back up. We're at 30 degrees. Temperatures right now in the upper 20s towards Black River Falls. Now, in the first warm forecast, we will talk more about rain chances and thunderstorm chances, so you don't want to miss that. Sophia, over to you. Thanks, Eric. Let's get to some news this morning. There are reports of power outages in different parts of La Crosse, Monroe and Jackson County. Excel Energy is reporting that thousands are without power in Winona and in Iowa. Most of the power has been restored, which once reported over 700 people without power around 215 AM, according to Alliant Energy. No cause was listed on Alliant Energy's website, but videos show wet, heavy snow causing power lines to hang low. The city of La Crosse has issued a snow emergency. That means alternate side parking already went into effect at six Sunday night. The snow emergency will last 48 hours, so it ends on to it ends today at 6 p.m. For further guidelines on parking and information on what to do during the snow emergency, you can visit the city of La Crosse's website. We have that on our website, news8000.com. The fire at Fort McCoy's north border is now extinguished. In a news release, Fort McCoy representatives said nearly 3,000 acres on Fort McCoy were burned and 109 acres in Monroe and Jackson counties were impacted during the fire that started April 12th. Fort McCoy thanked those who helped contain the fire and the community for its support. McCoy also said the cause of the fire is still unknown. Though there was a scheduled burn on McCoy's impact area on the day the fire began, the Vernon County Fire Association said in a release that the burn ban is still in effect. In Monona County, firefighters are working worked hard to extinguish a grass fire. The fire started near Preparation Canyon State Park and because of windy conditions, flames quickly spread to grass and timber in the area as of Friday morning, more than 
3,200 acres were burned. Officials say every fire department in the county came to help contain the fire, as well as neighboring Harrison County. A structure fire was the cause, and the fire has been contained. Lending a hand to the Women of La Crosse, the Women's Fund of Greater La Crosse kicked off its 25th year with its annual Spring Fling. This event helped support female-owned businesses and local organizations to help out women and girls. Attendees were also encouraged to bring feminine hygiene products to donate. The executive director says those donations help women everywhere. An organization like us, Women's Fund, ensures that dollars are going toward programs that are designed to help women build sustainability, self-sufficiency, and to build equality. If you miss the fundraiser, you can donate online. The link is on our website, news8000.com. The new location of Five Guys Burgers and Fries is delaying its planned grand opening due to hiring issues. That's according to an update from business manager Alex Humphreys. On Alaska's location on Kinney Cooley Road was originally scheduled to open tomorrow, April 18th. It was a day to honor a grand master in martial arts on Saturday. The students of the Three Rivers Martial Arts Academy paid tribute to Grand Master Larry Klan, who died back in 2021. The students also showed off their technique and taught the public more about martial arts. According to co-owner Pamela Mim, Klan's legacy has left a lasting impression. He was good at many, many things, and he was a very caring, generous man. So he, um, he really got to know people and was not just an instructor, he was a friend to many people. Three Rivers Martial Arts will also be hosting a women's self-defense class in June and July. If you are interested, you can learn more on their website. We posted a link on news8000.com. In La Crosse, a chance to celebrate young professionals. La Crosse's Reach Center held its Entrepreneur Expo. There, young entrepreneurs got a chance to promote their products. People had handmade artwork and other crafts for shoppers to buy. Shoppers also got the chance to vote for their favorite vendor. One organizer said this is a chance for artists to get their work noticed. Starting a business, especially as an artist, can be really, really hard, um, especially for young people who don't have access to capital like maybe adults do. And so we really want to showcase their skills and give them a chance to build those um, business skills alongside their art skills. The top three entrepreneurs were rewarded with money and a chance to have someone invest in their product. River City Gallery celebrated World Art Day with style. Local artists and art lovers celebrated all kinds of art this weekend. It's a chance to strengthen the bonds between artists and the communities they live in. When communities um, create opportunities for artists to be seen and to be supported, that makes a stronger community. So that's what we're really all about trying to do here. Over 60 local artists were featured at the event. Over in Myrick Park, a fun day took place for a good cause. At the Family Fun event, families from all over the region took part in all kinds of events like music and kids yoga. Organizers say this event is a chance for parents to relax and support one another. Parenting is one of the most difficult things we can do. And if we can just pass less judgment and more grace to each other when we're parenting, um, the, when parents are less stressed, it helps kids function and do better. Money from the event will go to help the Cooley Region Child Abuse Prevention Task Force. Across the bridge in La Crescent, neighbors took care of their own. Teams of local volunteers grabbed a rake and began spring cleaning on Saturday morning. The event served older adults and anyone who may need assistance with yard work. One organizer said it was a great way to keep, teach kids to give back. Hopefully, as they grow older, they'll learn to continue to do that and then give back as they get older to teach the younger generations, you know, that it's good to get out and, and do a little volunteer work. It's always good to give back to the community. Nearly 200 volunteers sign up for this event each year. Still ahead on your morning news, what the rise in gas prices could mean for the truck driving industry. And the Madison couple that's making sure your pet's number twos are priority number one. That and more coming up this morning.
For now, we're sending you to break with something to put the good in your morning. When you think of therapy animals, you probably don't think of Great Danes, which are bigger than some horses. At one hospital in Minnesota, Great Danes, Hulu and Tootsie are as friendly as they come. The Great Danes who are pretty great, and it doesn't matter if you're an older patient or someone seven times smaller than they are, Hulu and Tootsie are always looking to make a friend. Don't go anywhere, your consumer news at News 8 Now this morning after the break. All right, here's a look at the radar scan right now. You can see that clearing across the Cooley region. You can see over towards Pepin County, over towards Dunn County, over towards portions of Winnesheek and Albuquerque County starting to clear out at this hour. Temperatures across the area in the 20s and 30s. Eau Claire, good morning to you guys. You're at 30, 28 in Black River Falls, 28 in Viroqua. We're sitting at 30 in La Crosse, 33 is the current temperature in Prairie du Chien, but you factor in that feels like temperature Feels like temperatures are in the teens and 20s right now. 16 in Ladysmith, 19 Eau Claire, 18 La Crosse. The double deuces, 22 in Prairie du Chien, 15 in Viroqua. So here's a look at your day planner. We'll see temperatures going into the upper 30s, low 40s throughout the afternoon and early evening hours. We're going to keep that precept chance in the forecast as well, but you're noticing it'll start to dwindle down as we go into the afternoon and evening hours. Now keep in mind the uh, winter weather advisory and winter storm warnings still in effect for the majority of the viewing area. Those will expire throughout the day today. Some of those will expire at 10 o'clock in the morning. Some of those will expire uh, in the afternoon hours. More weather coming up in a few minutes. Sophia, over to you. In your consumer news this morning, there is a new rise in catalytic converter thefts from Toyota Priesus. The Pr Priesus is the most popular car with Prius, <laughs> excuse me, car with thieves because their catalytic converters contain more unused precious metals than standard gas vehicles. This is a video of a catalytic converter being stolen from a Prius in the West Valley last month. Two cars pull up and the thieves remove the converter in less than two and a half minutes. Rising fuel costs and driver shortages continue to impact the trucking industry. To attract more drivers, companies like Amazon and Walmart are offering training programs and higher pay. By 2030, the American Trucking Association says the trucking industry could see a shortage of 160,000 drivers despite the shortage. Experts say the trucking industry is still the most reliable transportation in the U.S. Your dog's number two is priority number one for a pet waste cleanup business in Madison. Mackenzie Davis caught up with the owner of Reporting for Doo Doo to talk to him about how business is picking up. I think my favorite poop pun is that we take a lot of crap from our customers. It's not a job for everyone, but someone's got to do it. I've just gotten used to it over the years. The idea came to mind on Thomas and Rachel Dietz's honeymoon in 2019, when Thomas wasn't too excited about going back home to clean up the yard filled with a week's worth of dog waste. Yeah, and I was like, you know, I wonder if anybody would ever pay for a service like that. And from there, the couple started reporting for duty. And this time of year, they say business ramps up. As soon as the snow melts, people look out in their backyard, especially who have two, three, four dogs and they see the waste piles out there and they're like, no way. <laughs> now serving over 120 customers in the Madison area. Each year we've doubled in size, sometimes tripled in size since 2019. This is a side hustle for Thomas, who works a nine to five as a network engineer, but with the growth of his scooping business, he hopes someday to make it his full-time gig. And the meaning behind the name reporting for duty is more than just a dog waste pun. Technically, our slogan for the company is leave no turd behind, which is a spin-off of leave no man behind. I wanted to make this somewhat military-related theme, being a veteran, which is where the reporting for duty came from. And clients aren't just people who don't feel like picking up after their pups. A lot of our customers rely on this service, too, who have disabilities, some are blind. As a veteran himself, Thomas says he also tries to serve disabled veterans with dogs. They just can't get out in their yard. So that gives it an extra 
good feeling that at least we're helping. Thomas hopes he can grow the business to have franchises across the Badger State or even from coast to coast. But one thing he knows is they'll stick to picking up only what dogs leave behind. We have gotten quotes for horse manure, um, pigs, <laughs> uh, chicken poop, goose poop, which some of them I've entertained. Um, the larger stuff like the horse, uh, we don't have any bobcats or anything for that. <laughs> The Deets currently have about 120 clients right now and hope to grow the business enough to start franchises across Wisconsin. That's it for your morning consumer news. Let's check in with Eric in today's forecast. All right, good morning, Sophia. Good morning, everybody. Here's some snowfall totals across the area. Uh, over towards the Elk Creek area, six inches. Centerville, seven inches. Arcadia, nine inches. We'll go a little bit farther south. Over towards the Winona area, 10 inches of snow across, picking up just under 7 inches, 7.5 inches being reported in Holman. Mount Prairie area picking up 7 inches. Toma picking up a couple of inches. Stoddard area, 6.5 inches. And then lesser amounts across portions of our southern zones. Boscobel, quick couple of inches. Churchtown, 6.8. Decorah, just under 5 inches of snow. So here's a look at the radar scan right now, and we'll go ahead and move the map, and I'll give you the grand tour as to what is going on in terms of who's seeing what. You can see that clearing over towards uh, the Rice Lake area. We'll go ahead and move the map farther south towards Bloomer. You can see still seeing some snow. Eau Claire seeing snow at this hour as well. There's Independence. There's Black River Falls. Winona, you're in the clear now. And then the further west you go, obviously, uh, the clearer it gets. Decorah, you're in the clear right now, but you go over towards uh, the Lansing area. You guys are still seeing a little bit of snow at this hour. Same story in Viroqua over towards Mauston. And we take a look here uh, at the past several hours. You can see how it just really started to get its act together across the area. Now, like I said, the good news is it is starting to let up and we'll be left with mostly cloudy skies as we go uh, throughout the day. Now, in terms of the advisory map, Everybody with the exception of Wabasha and Fillmore County still under some type of advisory. These will expire throughout the morning. Some of these will go into the early afternoon hours. But one thing to note with this is once this system clears out, we will be left with cloudy skies. Temperatures will go into the upper 30s to low 40s. And then we'll see a little bit of cloud cover in the early morning hours of your Tuesday. But after that, we'll be left with abundant sunshine. So details for today. Here's what we know. You don't need me to tell you there are several inches of snow on the ground. There are several inches of snow on the ground, but that snow will continue for a little bit. The advisories will continue throughout the morning hours. The snow will taper off this afternoon. Here's what to plan for for today. Slick roadways, whiteout conditions, especially in our eastern communities, and overall a slow morning commute. But make sure you have that free News 8000 Forest Horn Weather app on your device to receive the latest information for your area. Later on today, I will be posting a video forecast on there. Outside right now, La Crosse and Eau Claire both sitting at 30. 30 degrees is the current temperature in Eau Claire. It feels like 19 with winds out of the northwest at 16 miles per hour, gusting as high as 29 miles per hour. La Crosse, good morning to you guys there. 30 degrees, it feels like 18. Your visibility is at two miles with winds out of the northwest at 18 miles per hour. The river level is at 12.17 feet and rising. So we're seeing temperatures in the 20s and 30s from top to bottom. We're at the visibility still very low, especially where we're seeing snow. Volk Fields at zero, one in Black River Falls, one in Sparta, two in La Crosse, three in Viroqua, five in Basketball. Then from Winona westward, it is 10 miles. So that low pressure system that we've been talking about is now slowly pushing its way out of the Cooley region. High pressure is going to regain control, and that's what's going to allow us to be overall sunny for your Tuesday. But we've got to get past today first, where we have temperatures in the 30s and 40s with snow chances across the board. Shelby, you'll see 42. New Albany, you'll go to 45. Wacon will go to 44. Postal will go to 46. Houston will go to 45. Whitehall will go to 42. Arcadia, same story, 42 degrees. Trempolo will go to 43. And then 30s from Ladysmith, over towards Stanley, Altoona will go to 42, Loyal will go to 35 degrees. So the first one forecast for today will go to 42 degrees. That snow will taper off. We're going to stay cloudy and breezy with winds out of the northwest at 15 to 20 miles per hour. The next eight days, we go to 53 on Tuesday, 56 on Wednesday. Thunderstorm chances pick up Wednesday and Thursday, 51 for Friday, 40s and 50s for the weekend. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a few minutes. But first, here's a look at this day in history.
Montana is one step closer to becoming the first state to ban TikTok on all personal devices. State lawmakers passed the ban on the short form video platform, which sends the bill to Governor Greg Gianforte's desk. The legislation won't penalize individuals for using TikTok, but app stores who violate the law would face potential penalties of $10,000 per violation per day. If the governor signs the bill, the ban would take effect in January of 2024. Over the weekend, church bells rang as crowds came out for a ceremony to honor those killed in the Boston Marathon bombing 10 years ago. Today on the streets of Boston, the 127th running of the marathon is taking place under tight security. The Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension is investigating a shooting involving police which left one officer dead. The Pope County Sheriff's Office said two deputies along with a Starbucks officer were dispatched to a residential address on a domestic caller on 7.30 p.m. on Saturday. The officers were met with gunfire during the arrest and the suspect was shot dead as a result of the exchanged gunfire. The investigation is ongoing. While the current weather might make it seem otherwise, rivers all around the region are beginning to rise and overflow and flooding the nearby streets. Kristen Michelle from Stillwater has the details. And you could see there's a whole street here that was completely visible two days ago and now it's just gone. The St. Croix River is rising fast. Even within the last hour, we've got puddles coming in. So fast, Daniel Cornforth says the Dock Cafe will soon be closing their patios. So we'll have to clear out this whole patio and get it all set. We just lost half of our parking lot for emergency diking over there, so it's, yeah, it's, it's crazy. As they prepare for the water to rise another four to five feet, some businesses have started to see water in their basements. Pumps are working hard on the water's edge where a massive sandbag levee is protecting downtown. You know, it went up almost three feet yesterday, which is probably the fastest I've seen this river go up in, in my lifetime. I mean, it's cruising. The graph is almost going straight up, and it's usually more of a of an arc of a curve of sorts, and, and this is this is cruising. Mayor Ted Kozlowski thinks the water will rise close to the top of the levee. It is designed so we can peel the poly that we see up and we can add more sand to it. And we we can build it up another few feet if we need to. It's a pretty substantial effort though. The majority of homes in Stillwater are on higher ground, but Kozlowski worries about the communities to the south. Like there's a lot of homeowners in Bayport and Afton and, and kind of Lakeland and everywhere in between that we could see some significant damage down there depending on how high this river goes. And I'm certainly worried for my for our friends down there. Now all they can do is wait and hope that as fast as the water's rising, it recedes. We'll have a really nice view here. <laughs> Keep an eye on News 8000 First Warren Weather app and News8000.com for any potential flooding in our area. Democratic group Courage for America hosted a Back Off Our Benefits event in Red Cloud Park on Saturday. The conference called on Representative Derek Van Orden to not cut health care programs that include Social Security, Medicare and benefits for veterans. One leader says this is an issue that affects everyone. We've had different speakers come in from, re, you know, the regions that we're visiting and come in and tell us their stories. These are real Americans uh, dealing with real issues and, and, and facing real consequences uh, if the default crisis happens. This was the tour's last district stop. Courage for America will hold a press conference in Washington, D.C. today. Right now, all Wisconsin schools are gun-free zones, but a new proposal in the Wisconsin State Legislature could change that. Braden Ross explains. Is this a perfect solution? No, it's not a perfect solution. Is it a possible solution? Yeah. A new bill proposed in the Wisconsin Legislature this week could mean Wisconsin teachers can be armed at school. When it comes to our kids and our schools and protecting them in schools, I think we should put all options on the table. It's an idea that isn't popular with everyone. The last thing we need is more loaded guns in schools. But Representative Scott Allen says it's something schools are asking for. The idea for them came last summer when the Germantown School District passed a resolution asking the state to let them decide if school staff can carry firearms on campus. Wisconsin's law, which is a statewide law, preempts local school districts from making their own decisions relative to the protection and safety of their students. 
Right now, Wisconsin state law makes all schools in the state gun-free zones, something Allen says is a one-size-fits-all response to a complicated issue. Under his bill, the question of arming teachers would be left up to every individual school district. So if one community doesn't want to do that at all, then they voice that to their school board and their school board acts accordingly. If another school district says this is entirely appropriate for us, they can then implement their own policies. It's an approach Allen says could save lives. Every minute matters and um, in some communities, especially some of our rural communities, it could be a lot of minutes before authorities could arrive. But still, critics just aren't convinced. I don't think that anybody, no matter where they live, deserves to go to school and know that there are loaded weapons on school grounds. That doesn't make any of us safer. Governor Tony Evers stated that if this legislation lands on his desk, he wouldn't sign it. Now here's Eric to tell us what our driving conditions are currently looking like. Eric. All right, good morning, Sophia. Good morning, everybody. Take a look here at your commuter cast. We'll go ahead and start in La Crosse. Right now it feels like 30, it's 30 degrees. It feels like 18. You can see the snow on our city cam is falling. Visibility is at two miles over towards on Alaska. 30 degrees is your current temperature. It feels like 18. You're clearing out. Your visibility is sitting at five miles over towards Toma. 27 degrees is the current temperature. It feels like 16. Your visibility though sitting at zero. In Black River Falls, you're at 29 degrees. It feels like 19, but you have that low visibility right now at one mile. You can see on the DOT cams, the traffic is moving uh, pretty slow. So again, allow yourself extra time to get to your morning destination. Eau Claire, you're sitting at 30 degrees. You can see traffic is still moving very smooth. Visibility is good. It's at 10 miles. It feels like 19 degrees out there. So definitely bundle up if you're traveling this morning. Now the radar scan right now showing that line of snow slowly pushing its way out of the Cooley region. You can see as we go into uh, the next several hours by noon, it'll be out across the majority of the area by seven o'clock tonight, though everybody will be in the clear. Now we have thunderstorm chances in the forecast, much needed uh, sunshine, I should say as well, but we do have that rain chance in the forecast. We'll talk about that in a few minutes, but first in our buzz report, we'll have that coming up in a few minutes. Stay with us. Welcome back. I just received a report on the uh, News 8000 uh, First Warn Weather Facebook page. Uh, Holman area picking up close to 13 inches of snow. So here we go. The radar scan right now. Let's go ahead and give you the grand tour as to what is going on. You can see over towards the Lady Smith area still seeing snow. Here's a look at Highway 8. You go across uh, I-94, Highway 12. Eau Claire, you're starting to clear out now just a little bit. Black River Falls is still seeing a little bit of snow. Same story in Toma. It's starting to exit the La Crosse area. You go across portions of Juneau and Adams County. You guys are still seeing snow at this hour. And then you go across our southern zones, Richland, Crawford County, over towards Viroqua, seeing snow. Uh, Prairie du Chien, you're, in, you're getting in the clear now. Same story across portions of uh, eastern Alamakee County. You guys are in the clear as we speak. So let's go ahead and take a look here now at the past several hours. Here's how we got to where we are now. That low pressure system was just sitting here and spinning. It's slowly moving its way out of the Cooley region. Now, all advisories are still in play. Wabasha and Fillmore County, your advisory has now expired, but Dunn, Pepin, Winnesheek, and Alamakee County, you're still under a winter weather advisory. Everybody else is still under a winter storm warning. These advisories will expire later on this morning. Some of these will expire uh, in the early afternoon hours, one o'clock to be exact. So here's the timing of everything. You can see right here on SkyTracker, that low pressure system exiting out of the Cooley region. We'll be left with mostly cloudy skies as we go into the overnight hours. By Tuesday morning, we'll start the day off with mostly cloudy skies and abundant sunshine will be the rule as we go throughout the late morning, early afternoon hours. Now, here's what we know. As I mentioned, the advisories will continue throughout the morning hours. That snow will taper off in the afternoon hours. 
Here's what the plan for slick roadways, whiteout conditions, and overall a slow morning commute, especially in our eastern zones. But everybody needs to make sure you have the First Horn Weather app on your device to receive the latest information, uh, especially since these advisories will be expiring uh, later on today. And now later on, I will have a forecast posted on there. We're seeing a temperature of 30 degrees in Eau Claire. Your feels like temperature, though, is 19 with winds out of the northwest at 16 miles per hour. You're seeing a gust as high as 29 miles per hour. La Crosse, we're seeing mostly cloudy skies. The snow is still coming down at the airport. 30 degrees is the current temperature. It feels like 18, but I want to draw your attention to this number right there. That Mississippi River is now at 12.17 feet and it's continuing to rise. So we're seeing temperatures in the 20s and 30s at this hour. And as mentioned, that feels like temperature is in the teens and 20s. Visibility is still a concern across our central and eastern part of the viewing area, especially towards Black River Falls, Sparta, Barroqua, even La Crosse, Boswell, you're at three mile visibility. Volk Field, you're still sitting at zero. But where the snow is lifted, you can see the 10 mile visibility in Winona as well as Decorah. So the slow pressure system that's in control, it's pushing its way out of here. High pressure is going to regain control as we go into uh, your Monday and Tuesday. You see this warm front. This is going to push its way through later on in the week, and that's what's going to allow us to go back up into the 50s. So with that being said, here's a look at your forecast for today. Starting in La Crosse County, everybody's seeing temperatures in the upper 30s to low 40s. Again, keeping that snow chance in the forecast. Upper 30s to low to mid 40s for a southern zone. New Albany and Lansing, you'll go to 45. Brownsville, go to 44. Whitehall, go to 42. Winona will go to 44. The Mondovi area will go to 43. Then our northern zone, the traditionally cooler zone, will see temperatures in the mid to upper 30s. So the details of the first warm forecast for today will go to 42 degrees. That snow is going to taper off. We'll be left with cloudy skies with winds out of the northwest at around 15 to 20 miles per hour. The next eight days, we go back into the 50s on Tuesday, mid 50s for Wednesday and Thursday. Then that front I was talking about is going to push through Friday. We'll drop the temperatures with highs in the upper 40s, low 50s. Same story for Saturday, then back into the mid to upper 50s by Monday. Sophia, over to you. In our morning buzz report, the Japan-based entertainment company Sega is closing on a deal to buy the company who made the popular Angry Birds mobile game. Rovio Entertainment is the company behind the well-known app. The Wall Street Journal reports the deal is reported to be in the $1 billion range. Angry Birds became popular after its release in 2009. The deal is expected to close by next week. Actually working, uh, doing a brand new reimagined version of If I Ain't Got You with a 90-piece orchestra with women of color. R&B sensation Alicia Keys has re-recorded her iconic single If I Ain't Got You for a spin-off of Netflix's hit series Bridgerton. Keys will release the reimagined version of the ballad for the upcoming Queen Charlotte A Bridgerton Story. The series debuts next month. Phantom of the Opera has taken its final bow. After 35 years, the iconic musical hosted its final show on Sunday evening. This made Phantom of the Opera Broadway's longest running production, which includes nearly 14,000 performances. New York City honored and thanked composer Andrew Lloyd Webber last week with a key to the city. He said Broadway is the reason why so many people come to New York, and he's thankful to have been part of the community. Are you an Angry Birds fan? I, I loved it and I played it. A lot. What about you? I, I remember in 2009 it said is when it came out right. and I remember like I was probably gosh in middle school mm -hmm. and I played it a lot when it See, first I came out. I kind of wish this was a huge touch screen so then we could just put it on here and just flip the bird back. Oh and, 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 then, fling and, then, it. and then hit the pigs, <laughs> hit the pigs that way. Right. No, I don't uh, play it anymore, though. We didn't spend the extra 10 bucks for that touch screen. No. <laughs> Before we head to break, it's time to look at today's Look Who's 8. All right. Happy eight months to Tucker. Tucker loves to smile and also enjoys bath time. Happy eighth birthday to Henry. Henry loves sports and competes in baseball, wrestling, football, and track. Happy birthday to Kenton. Kenton enjoys, ooh, making French toast with his grandfather. I think we may, I think I know where we're going to go grab breakfast now. <laughs> 
Happy 18th birthday to Haley. Haley is returning to look who's eight, 10 years after her eighth birthday. She's graduating from high school this spring and loves all of her animals. So I guess when she turns 28, then she'll, she'll be, she'll be there back again. <laughs> exactly. So if you know someone special turning eight months, eight years, 18, 80, or 88 soon, we would love to feature them. That's right. Just upload their photo to our website, news8000.com, and look for the submit pictures button under the home tab on our website. Stay with us. We have everything you need to know today in five minutes or less. Your morning news now is up next. There are reports of downed power lines in different parts of our viewing area. Excel Energy is reporting that thousands are without power in La Crosse County. And down in Iowa, power has been restored to most customers. In New Albin, after over 700 are reported to still be without power. The estimated restoration is around 2.15 a.m. No cause was listed on Alliant Energy's website, but photos show wet, heavy snow causing power lines to hang low. Also, as temperatures continue to rise, be cautious of flooding. Check out our app or news8000.com for any updates on potential flooding in our area. The city of La Crosse has issued a snow emergency. That means alternative side parking already went into effect at 6 Sunday night. The snow emergency will last 48 hours, so it ends on it ends today at 6 p.m. For further guidelines on parking and information on what to do during the snow emergency, you can visit the city of La Crosse's website for more information. Democratic group Courage for America hosted a Back Off Our Benefits event in Red Cloud Park on Saturday. The conference called on Representative Derek Van Orden to not cut health care programs that include Social Security, Medicaid, Medicare, and Bennett's for Veterans. One leader says this is an issue that affects everyone. We've had different speakers come in from you know, the regions that we're visiting and come in and tell us their stories. These are real Americans uh, dealing with real issues and, and, and facing real consequences uh, if the default crisis happens. This was the tour's last district stop. Courage for America will hold a press conference in Washington, D.C. today. Lending a hand to the women of La Crosse, the Women's Fund of Greater La Crosse kicked off its 25th year with its annual Spring Fling. This event helps support female-owned businesses and local organizations to help out women and girls. Attendees were also encouraged to bring feminine hygiene products to donate. The executive director says those donations help women everywhere. An organization like us, Women's Fund, ensures that dollars are going toward programs that are designed to help women build sustainability, self-sufficiency, and to build equality. If you miss the fundraiser, you can also donate online. The link to the Women's Fund is on our website, news8000.com. The new location of Five Guys Burgers and Fries is delaying its planned grand opening due to hiring issues. That's according to an update from business manager Alex Humphreys. On Alaska's location on Kinney Cooley Road was originally scheduled to open to tomorrow, April 18th. All right, here's a look at your first warm forecast for today. We'll see temperatures in the upper 30s to low 40s. That snow will taper off in the late morning, early afternoon hours. Winds will be out of the northwest at around 15 to 20 miles per hour. Some places could see gusts as high as 40 miles per hour. So here's how we get there. We'll see temperatures in the mid 40s throughout the e early evening hours. We'll go to the upper 30s by 9 o'clock and then 37 degrees with mostly clear skies by the 11 o'clock hour. Abundant sunshine to start your Tuesday, but rain chances pick up Tuesday night. Thunderstorm chances pick up Wednesday and Thursday, then another chance of a wintry mix Friday going into Saturday. That's Friday night going into Saturday morning. One thing to note, Sophia, with all the flooding concerns going on right now, rain is the last thing that we need across this area. Some places are still under a flood warning until further notice. Yeah, I had I was driving back from Door County. I went home this weekend mm. and a lot of the lakes were yeah. just slowly starting to flow into the into the roads. Right, and the Mississippi here in La Crosse is still rising. I know, and now well. with all the snow. Yeah, not good. Not good. No. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. You bet. And thank you for watching News 8 Now. Don't forget to keep up with the news of the day on News8000.com. We will have the latest updates to today's top stories on News 8 Now at noon. Have a great day, everyone, and thank you for watching News 8.